Everest, the pinnacle of this planet, also known as Sagar Matha, which means Goddess of the Sky, standing over 29,000 feet above the sea level, a dream of every mountaineer and adventure seeker. Not everyone is privileged to climb this iconic peak, but there is a place which can be reached by almost everyone who dreams to see this mountain with their own eyes. And that is the Everest Base Camp, situated deep into the Himalayas. It is the doorstep for climbers. But for us, it is a place where we can have an upfront encounter with some of the tallest mountains in the world. Hi, my name is Atif and I am going to chase my Everest dream with my notorious friend Ayush. In this video, I am going to share my experience of the most adventurous trek in the world. For the next 12 days, I will be hiking over 130 kilometers, a journey through some of the highest villages in the world. The trek runs deep into the Khumbu region, a place miles away from the modern civilization and filled with a bunch of hidden gems of the nature. To name a few, we are going to walk along the highest glacier in the world, the Khumbu Glacier. We will be crossing the Dood Kosi River, which drains water directly from Mount Everest. And we are going to experience the most beautiful sunrise in the world. And the trek is filled with a ton of jaw-dropping views of the Himalayan range. In short, this trek is a heaven for all the travelers across the globe. Our journey begins from the capital city of Nepal, Kathmandu, also known as the entrance to the Himalayas. This city is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world and one can experience the depth of its culture and history in the twisted streets, ancient temples and famous bazaars. We will be staying here for two nights. In this time, we will be exploring this beautiful city and will prepare for the upcoming journey. We reached our hotel located in the famous Thamil Market, a place where you can buy all the necessary trekking gears, woolen clothes, artifacts and the lethal Gorkha weapon, Kukri. The next day, we decided to visit the ancient Patandarbar Square. Located in the middle of the crowded city lies this marvel of architecture. 
the 500 year old palace consisting of beautiful temples and statues will take you back in time once we started to walk here we began to absorb the aura of that palace and one cannot deny there is a sense of warmth and relaxation here The vibrant colors, the delicious food, and especially the Nepali people who are very kind and hospitable. The whole atmosphere will give you a sense of belongingness and that's why people find it very hard to leave this place and some people end up making Nepal as their home. As the day came to an end, we reached the oldest temple in Nepal, the Pashupatinath Temple. Located along the bank of Bagmati River, it is one of the biggest tourist attraction. The exact date of its construction is still unknown. But there are claims of it being 1500 to 1600 years old. The temple carries a huge significance in Hinduism as there are legends which connects Lord Shiva and Parvati to this temple. one can still experience the ancient rituals taking place at numerous places within the temple Finally we headed back to our hotel where we met the rest of the guys in our group and Hello. had the discussions of upcoming journey with our lead guide Ramesh Today is the official start of the trek we would be traveling to a place called Lukla a small town which connects the outside world to the Khumbu region and the easiest way to reach Lukla is via charter flight By the way, Lukla airport is known as the world's most dangerous airport because of the steep and short runway within the huge mountains. The flights to Lukla are often delayed due to the bad weather. After waiting for a couple of hours, finally our flight arrived. and as soon as the plane took off we were able to see the immense view of the himalayan range but it is for a very short duration as the flight just takes 30 minutes to reach lukla from kathmandu After a harsh landing we quickly picked up our bags and without wasting any time quickly got ready for the upcoming trek It is said that a journey is counted in friends rather than miles so let me quickly introduce the rest of the team members to you Ghansham he is the oldest guy in our group right now he is 69 years old and despite of his age he is one of the fittest guy in our group then we have the youngest guy in our group nathik he runs his own business in hyderabad but he makes sure that he explores a new place every year 
The next person in our group is a young entrepreneur, Pulkit. He runs his own company in New Delhi and he is filled with enthusiasm and motivation. His main quality is that he can quickly mix up with a person of any age. Talking about mixing up, here is the storyteller of our group, Akash. He has traveled around 65 countries and he has a ton of experience and stories to share. And the latest camera is the Chinese camera from the coming out of the demand. I mean, I have compared with all the latest iPhone inputs. Next guy in our group is the adrenaline man, Ashish. He runs a digital studio in Mumbai, but he has a never-ending zeal for adventure. From skydiving to a race with cheetah, you name it and he has done it all. We also have a policeman in our group, Aniket. Now, we don't have to worry about the security at all. Our group would be incomplete without the mountain girl, Kritika. She is a chartered accountant by profession, but her soul lives in the mountains. Talking about mountaineering, we have the summiter, Lingaraj. He has already summited many huge peaks, but now his eyes are set on few 7000ers before he shoots for the Everest. Next we have the station master, Raj Shekhar. After working very hard in his life, now it is the time for him to enjoy. We also have two techies in our group, Vinod and Shamili. And the final member of our team is the silent man, Pankaj. He came here to escape the chaos and forget the world and which place can be better than the Himalayas. I have already introduced my notorious friend Ayush. So lastly, we have the real heroes of the trek, the porters, who will be carrying our luggage on their shoulders till the end of the trek. And our guides, Khadka and Rajan, who will be there to entertain us and provide us all the useful information. Our lead guide is Ramesh ji, who will be taking care of all the members like a father. <coughs> By the way, Ramesh belongs to the Sherpa community. My name is Ramesh. Sherpa community? Yes, Sherpa. He is Sherpa. Talking about Sherpas, these people are of Tibetan ethnicity and are considered to be the strongest when it comes to surviving in the mountains. Even when Edmund Hillary climbed the Everest, there was the famous Sherpa Tenzing Norgay and without his help, Edmund Hillary would not have reached the summit of Mount Everest. So after reaching Lukla, we prepared ourselves for the 12 km trek to Monzo. Ramesh ji told us that the trek today is not so difficult as we will not be gaining any significant altitude. The only thing we need to take care about is to protect ourselves from the rain because at this place if someone falls ill he will not be able to complete the trek. So one important thing is poncho poncho allergy. Poncho. Yeah, poncho. Raincoat. 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 And in case of an emergency there will be a helicopter evacuation which can cost you a huge amount of money. As soon as we left Lukla, rain started to get heavy, but we decided to keep walking. It was just an hour ago when we were roaming in the busy streets of Kathmandu, and suddenly we are walking on this uneven sloppy path. But everyone is enjoying the first glimpse of the beautiful landscapes, the isolated communities and especially the Tibetan culture. Now we have started to feel that this is going to be the best trekking experience of our life.
just after some time we reach the first suspension bridge which has been made to cross the highest elevation river in the world known as the dud kosi river Lunch time. After walking for three hours, we decided to take a lunch break. You will find these cafes all over the trek. They provide pretty delicious food with a lot of options. But I recommend to prefer the traditional food here, which is dal bhat. As you get a free refill for this item, and it is necessary that you eat a good amount of calories. because walking for 12 kilometers in the mountains require a lot of energy after lunch we continued walking through the valleys forest and suspension bridges the freshness in the air and the pleasant smell of rain and rocks was enough for everyone to forget their stressful lives As the evening arrived the mist started to set in the mountains and the temperature started to drop Finally we reached Monjo Tonight we will be staying at this lodge If you are coming on this trek then you will be staying at these lodges known as tea houses talking about accommodation these lodges consist of a very cozy dining area this is the place where you can spend hours and hours relaxing with your friends the private rooms are not very big but still good enough just to have rest same goes with the toilets they are not very luxurious but definitely they will serve the purpose if you want to have a hot shower it is available at lower altitude for free but as you go higher the prices will start to rise our phone signal still looks good our guide told us that we will be connected to the phone network of encel till dengboche pickle kon hai After changing our clothes we went to the dining area as the dinner was waiting for us As compared to Kathmandu the prices are pretty higher and the reason behind this difference is there is no convenient way of transport from Kathmandu to Lukla the goods are often transported using helicopters and beyond Lukla porter carries these goods to higher altitudes and these people put so much of effort so that we can sit here and enjoy this amazing dinner <laughs> after having a good rest i woke up early in the morning to check out the surrounding area and just behind the hotel was this beautiful waterfall After spending some time I went back to the hotel for breakfast 
टुडे आई बी ट्राइंग द डिलीशियस टिबिटन ब्रेड विद हिमालयन हनी जस्ट आफ्टर द ब्रेकफास्ट वी लेफ्ट आउट फॉर अवर नेक्स्ट स्टॉप नामचे बाजार टुडेज ट्रैक इज अप्रॉक्स सिक्स आवर्स लॉन्ग बट इट इज गोइंग टू बी मच डिफिकल्ट एज वी विल बी गेनिंग इन एल्टीट्यूड ओवर सिक्स हंड्रेड मीटर्स वंस वी स्टार्टेड टू वॉक वी नोटिस्ड अ सूदिंग एरोमा इन द एयर It is believed that burning these scented leaves every morning keeps the negative energies away. Just after few minutes, we reached the entrance of the Sagar Mantha National Park. At this point we have to take the permits because this place is protected and recognized as the world heritage site Without wasting any time we made the entry because today the weather is crystal clear and we don't want to miss this opportunity Suddenly the landscape changed and we were surrounded by these gorgeous sceneries all around The local people are always friendly and welcoming which makes the whole experience more pleasant. After continuing for few hours we reached the biggest attraction of today's trek the Hillary suspension bridge. Acha. And nay river ka name kya hai? Dudkosi. Acha Dudkosi. Aur ye bridge Hillary 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 Edmund Hillary ke naam pe This bridge is named after Sir Edmund Hillary and is one of the highest suspension bridge in Nepal. It runs across the famous Dudkosi River. And once you reach the top, the wind is so strong, the bridge literally swings and can make anyone uncomfortable. After the hard climb we started to breathe really heavy and decided to take a short break You can find these local people selling food items all along the trek The items are usually very expensive for instance an apple can cost you from 100 to 200 Nepali rupees That's why it is always better to carry your own food items The daily struggle of these people have made them super strong which can be clearly seen in their extraordinary muscle development. Okay, 
Finally, we reached the Namche Bazaar, a beautiful town and the main trading center in the Khumbu region. It is the last place where you can buy all the necessary items and most importantly, the last place which has an ATM. We will be staying here for one more day to acclimatize. So today we are heading straight to the hotel as it has been a very tiring hike today. Namaste. <laughs> Lunch we start together. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need a bowl of hot garlic soup and a very cozy bed to sleep After having a good sleep, I finally woke up early in the morning and I can feel the temperature have dropped below 10 degrees Celsius. Outside the window, I can see the snow covered peaks and the clouds hovering around. Despite of the unpredictable weather, I went outside to capture the early morning view of the town. And I swear, it is one of the most beautiful morning I have ever seen. Everything feels so different. The Buddhist chants, chirping of the birds, the exotic aroma. It is so refreshing. Today is our acclimatization day, so the plan is to hike to a higher altitude, then come back to Namche and explore the town. Namche Bazaar has been a trading hub of local communities since a long time. So if you are looking to buy any gift item, this is the right place. Apart from this, you can find world class cafes here, where you can enjoy fine food of all the cuisines. And most importantly, we also have a pharmacy here. So make sure you buy all the necessary medicines here only. Also, I would recommend to visit three famous spots here. Hotel Everest View, which is the highest hotel in the world. Namche Museum, where you can learn about the Sherpa culture and some history making moments in this region. Finally, the Namche Monastery. Now, everyone is ready for the acclimatization walk. For those who don't know about it, acclimatization is a process where we give time to our body to adjust in an environment. In our case, we are constantly gaining height every day. And as a result, there is a drop in oxygen level and air pressure. Our bodies are not used to it. And if we don't give enough time to our body to adapt, then we can suffer from something known as acute mountain sickness, in which a person can fall really ill. And in some cases, it can also result in death. So today, we are going to follow the climb high, sleep low rule. We are going to expose our body to a higher altitude and then we'll come back and sleep at Namche only.
making our way through the forests and valleys we reached our destination the viewpoint gives a broad view of the valleys around we took a short break to enjoy the view and click some memorable photos After returning back we still have ample of time to explore this place and what can be better than playing a volleyball game with locals After college this is the first time I am playing volleyball and I feel like I have almost forgotten this game It really took me back to the college days and it feels really amazing After that we got a chance to visit the house of a local player and I was surprised to see how these people live in these small wooden houses yet they are very happy with their life Before going to the hotel we decided to explore the local market and we met this wonderful guy He owns a small shop of local items and he told us that he loves to play guitar so we requested him to sing a song for us second is song okay dio nahi okay would you dance if i had to see you dance would you run and never look back Would you cry if you saw me crying? Would you save my soul tonight? Would you tremble if I touch your lips? Would you laugh? Oh, please tell me this. Now would you die for the one you love? For me, you are tonight. I can be your hero, baby. I can kiss away the pain. I will stay by you forever. You can take. It has been just two days into the trek, and I am totally soaked up into the moments. Yesterday was such a memorable day for me but today we will be leaving this place that's why we are here and that's what life is we have to keep moving forward Our next stop is Tengboche. 
it is a 5 to 6 hour trek with moderate difficulty Tengboche Valley is one of the most beautiful places on this trek and the good news is the weather today looks pretty amazing It was just two days ago when we all were strangers, and now we are cracking jokes like we knew each other since childhood. <laughs> yes. Dal bat power, dal bat power, twenty power, ten days taking, no toilet, no, no toilet, shower, no shower, <laughs> uh, t-shirt, smell like flower, <laughs> smell like flower, t-shirt. On this trek, you will meet a lot of trekkers coming from different countries. with whom you might up end up being very good friend and listening to their stories is always fascinating kind of now if you will reach to gokyo then you will i was at the base camp 29 years ago 29 years ago yeah so yeah oh okay the base camp just like that or you were going to climb no no i was not going to climb after walking for 3 hours on this rocky trail We reached the famous stupa from where you can have a clear view of Mount Amadablam and the Everest range. Right now, the peaks are not visible due to the clouds, but the views is still breathtaking. The blue sky and the beautiful valleys around gives an unreal look to this stupa After spending some quality time we made the final descent through the dense forest before we stopped for the lunch break Today I will be trying the veg noodles. People say that the noodles taste more delicious in the mountains and I pretty much agree with that. <laughs> Before reaching Tengboche, we have to make a final ascent and that is going to be very challenging. because the uphill climb is very steep and rocky make sure you don't rush on such climbs because if you lose your breath then it will take time to recover it finally we entered tengboche it is a very small town famous for the tengboche monastery the 140 year old monastery is also the biggest monastery in nepal and considered as one of the most sacred buddhist site in this region
most of the times we are so busy in our day to day lives we don't really think what the purpose of life is but here miles away from the society finally i am giving time to myself and my vision for life is becoming more clear it is rightly said that there is wisdom in climbing mountains they teaches us how small we are and what really matters in our life and today we are ready for the new lessons as we are heading to our next stop dengboche the 11 km trek is going to be much difficult than yesterday as we will be gaining another 700 meters of altitude and now we have to track our oxygen level on a daily basis to make sure that our health is also on track The glimpse of Lhotse and Everest got everyone excited for today's trek. The beauty about this trek is that you will never get bored. The mountains always have something new to offer on each and every step. After three hours, we reached the beautiful Bangboche village. Ramesh told us that very soon we will stop at a place known as Somare, and that will be our lunch break. As we continued after lunch, we noticed that the landscape started to change. The terrain appears to be more rugged now. Even the vegetation is disappearing and there are no more houses or cafes around us. I guess this indicates that moving further things are going to get more challenging. While walking into the mist, I noticed something is moving below the hill. This is the first time I saw these huge beasts roaming around, and I couldn't wait to get near it and capture them in my camera. Wow, that is the craziest thing I have done on this trek. Reaching Dengboche on time was such a big relief and we couldn't wait to check into our hotel.
On the way to the hotel, we made a new friend, and she told us that there is a very famous cafe here, and it should be on our checklist while exploring this place. As we are moving further, the rooms are getting smaller with basic facilities, and the outdoor toilet. is already giving me chills After having the dinner we decided to play the cards game We can't remember when we had so much fun last time It shows that we as humans are far more happy when we interact and communicate with each other टूडे इज सिक्स डे ऑफ आर ट्रैक एंड अगेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी द एक्लम्पटाइजेशन डे एट दिस पॉइंट नथिंग इज फॉर फ्री इवन फॉर चार्जिंग बैटरीज यू वुड हैव टू पे That's why it is always recommended to carry power banks with you. As for the trend since past few days, we have noticed that the weather is clear only in the morning and in the evening the whole sky is covered with clouds. So today we are leaving early for the acclimatization walk. But as soon as we started to walk we realized that the weather is not in our favor today in just few minutes the whole area was covered with mist and nothing was visible beyond 10 meters in such conditions it is very hard to stay on the right track but there is something which trackers do to mark the correct route You must have seen these piles of stones at many hiking places. These are called Kans rocks. If you have seen any of these, it means that you are on the right path. After returning from the hike, we went to the famous cafe which was suggested by our new friend. It is unbelievable that there is such an amazing cafe at such a remote place. If you are coming on this trek, write it down on your checklist. The food is absolutely amazing. This place provides a perfect ambience for the trekkers. You can order food and sit here as long as you want. And the best part is that at 2 p.m. a movie is played here every day, and today we are going to watch the movie Sherpa. It is rightly said that stories bring us together. Although everyone is coming from different country and background, but right now there is a sense of warmth in being together. few days back we all were strangers but today we feel like we are one family
As the night arrived, Ramesh gave us the briefing for tomorrow. The weather today was very rough, so moving forward, we have to take all the necessary precautions. A little bit you like this, and try it long. Two seconds, you have to hold, control, hold, and try. Do a nine, ten to nine times. Today we are going to Laguche, the second highest village on this trail. Standing at an astonishing elevation of 5000 meters above the sea level, it will be the last stop for us before reaching the base camp. The trek runs deep into the Himalayas and is loaded with some spectacular views of snow covered peaks. Usually the weather gets clear in the month of September, but this year the monsoon has delayed. And as we predicted yesterday, the unpleasant cold mist has surrounded us again. In the beginning, the trek looks easy as we are walking on this flat landscape. With almost no visibility, the scene looks straight out of a horror movie. For the last time, we are going to cross this river and the rumbling sound of water rushing below my feet scared the hell out of me. After crossing the Dood Kosi river, we reached a place called Tukla. This will be our lunch break. The group is regathered on these breaks and most importantly, we get time to refuel our energy back. But the break doesn't last long. Just after the lunch, we have to make the steep ascent towards the Thukla Pass. As soon as we entered the pass, we came across the saddest point on this trek the memorial viewpoint. Here, you can see dozens of memorials built for those climbers who made it to the top of Mount Everest and never made it back to their home. Their bodies are still lying somewhere in the lap of Everest, frozen in the snow since decades. And one of them is the famous memorial of Scott Fisher for us, it is the time to pay tribute to these heroes of mountains. Finally, we reached Loboche and my head feels really heavy. I am not sure if it is due to the altitude or the bad weather. But it's time for me to take medicines because the finish line is not far away. And at this point, I cannot afford to fall ill. After 12 hours of sleep, I finally feel better. Today is the day we all were waiting for. We are just eight and a half kilometers away from the base camp. It is going to be the final test of our endurance. The plan for today can be broken in two parts. At first, we will reach the last village on this trek, Gorakhship. 
we will leave our luggage at the lodge as we will be returning to this place in the evening and then we will continue forward towards the base camp the majestic views of the mountains have become more intense i can't believe we have reached here so quickly the emotions have started to flow there is a mixed feeling right now on one hand there is a thrill and enthusiasm of moving forward towards our goal and on the other hand there is an uneasiness thinking about how soon all this is coming to an end the best thing we can do right now is to be in the moment and absorb the beauty as much as we can In just three hours, we reached Gorakhshep, and this is what I was looking for: nature in its purest form, raw and untamed. On the right side, you can see this huge mass of muddy ice. It is the highest glacier in the world, the Khumbu Glacier, and very soon we will be walking along this glacier. Beyond Gorakhshep the trail is the toughest and you would be literally walking on these huge rocks but the experience is otherworldly the landscapes will make you feel that you are walking on a different planet While walking along the glacier you will hear this loud crackling noise when the pieces of ice fall into the water The huge portion of ice which is flowing like a river is called the Khumbu ice fall. Anyone who attempts to climb Mount Everest has to cross this dangerous section. It is a maze of huge blocks of ice and deep crevasses which has already taken lives of at least 44 climbers.
finally we reached our destination the base camp is in front of us and the feeling cannot be described we can feel the adrenaline rushing through our veins and hiding in the clouds somewhere the highest point on earth is just behind us Even after the warning from my guide, I couldn't stop myself to go near that glacier and touch it with my own hands. And I really have no regrets for taking this risk. The sheer size of this glacier left me overwhelmed and the dazzling beauty of this whole area made me forget where I was. Honestly, this is the best day of my life, but the story is not over yet. Everest was not visible today due to the clouds, but we have one more shot tomorrow. We will be hiking to a place known as Kala Pathar, the highest peak in this region which can be climbed without a permit, and it is the best place where you can see the sun rising just from the behind of Everest. We are not going to sleep tonight because it is the last chapter of our story so we are going to make it special To reach Kala Pathar before sunrise, you have to leave Gorakhshep at almost midnight, chalo, chalo, chalo. and it takes two to three hours to reach the summit. And this is the most challenging part of the whole trek. Walking on this steep mountain in freezing cold temperature is not an easy task. Even with our headlamps on, almost nothing is visible except our feet. But after reaching the top. Every ounce of your hard work will be paid off. The sky looks clear and the magic is about to happen. The stunning beauty has left me mesmerized. This is a lifetime experience for me, and I hope you can also feel what I'm feeling right now.
For the next three days, we will be trekking back to Lukla with this collection of wonderful memories which I will cherish my whole life. Apart from this, the whole journey has been a spiritual awakening for me. It has made me more humble and it has taught me that the purpose of life is to live consciously and appreciate everything that we have because in the end we are left with these experiences which we had in our life. And if you waste your time just by adjusting your goals and actions to fit in the society, then this experience is not going to be a good one.